For me, what's very exciting about the field at the moment is that we're moving from an era of what I call serendipity to one of sense. And by that, I mean the drugs that we traditionally have used for the last 40, 50 years, drugs like methotrexate and azathioprine and cyclophosphamide, these were drugs introduced to lupus via other diseases. They were not introduced specifically for lupus patients. And now we're coming to an era in which drugs are being targeted, introduced because they attack the particular cells and molecules which are actually involved in the cause of lupus. And that's, I think, is a very exciting thing. Rituximab is an example of a biologic agent which attacks particular sites of B lymphocyte cells. These are cells which are found very widely in the blood, in the bone marrow, and they're responsible ultimately for producing the antibodies, or in fact the autoantibodies, the self-attacking antibodies, which are clearly very important in the development of the disease as a whole. So the introduction of rituximab, which attacks these particular B lymphocytes, has given us a, a new way to go in the last 10 years. I was the, my group I should say, was the first group to introduce the treatment of rituximab into patients with lupus and the hospital ethics committee where I work until about two years ago only allowed me to treat patients with lupus who had failed all conventional therapy. What's very interesting is that the hospital allowed me to treat patients at the start of their lupus disease uh, just after diagnosis a couple of years ago and I've now treated nine patients in that way. And this complements some very interesting work that's going on in London by a nephrologist called Dr Lightstone who has treated approximately 50 patients with lupus nephritis at the time of diagnosis with rituximab and with mycophenolate but without using any oral steroids. Now the results look very very encouraging and the idea of treating patients with lupus without steroids really would be a game changer because for 60 years steroids have been the staple treatment for lupus patients and they are no doubt and uh, unquestionably life-saving drugs on occasions but unfortunately they have many side effects uh, and we know that the side effects caused by lupus uh, can be permanent uh, and this is a, a major concern. Uh, studies done in Canada just a year or so ago show very clearly that around 25% of the damage, the permanent change that's seen in lupus patients is due to steroids. So if we could find a way of stopping the use of steroids in lupus patients, I think that would be very helpful. In the last three or four years, uh, other drugs, including um, Benlista, which attacks a molecule which activates these B cells, has been introduced. And very excitingly, this drug has been found to meet its endpoints in two recent clinical trials. Another biologic agent called epituzumab attacks another marker also on B cells. This marker is called CD22, whereas rituximab attacks the CD20 molecule. And again, there's been a report that epituzumab has met its endpoints in a clinical trial. Uh, so this is a really very exciting era for lupus patients, I think. What is coming up very fast on the horizon is another drug called Atacicept. Uh, whereas the bliss or the anti-bliss antibody attacks one B cell activating factor, Atacicept attacks two of them. So at least in theory, it should be twice as good, I suppose. Whether it will prove to be the case in, in, in practice, of course, we, remains to be seen. Uh, but there is an ongoing trial in non-renal lupus patients, which I think will be very interesting. There are other ways to go with antibodies which attack other molecules which are involved in the immune process. Uh, interferon alpha is, is, the, is a key target. Uh, so again, uh, ongoing trials looks very interesting, uh, and we rate the results with great interest. We know from genetic studies that what's called the interferon signature uh, is clearly present in patients with lupus. That implies that uh, interferon alpha is likely to be playing a significant role in the development of lupus. Uh, there are at least two products which are available to be used uh, and ongoing trials will give us the answer relatively soon as to whether or not they're going to be clinically effective. Uh, uh, there is a huge amount of work going on, a huge effort going on involving many countries looking at the genetics of lupus. What is it? What are the genes which predispose us to getting uh, lupus? It seems likely that over 20 genes are going to turn out to be responsible uh, in whole or in part. These will probably vary from one ethnic group to another. And it seems very likely that these different genes will control different elements of uh, predilection to developing lupus, whether to antibody production or particular sorts of clinical uh, onset earlier or later or to particular types of lupus. So it may be that within the next 10 to 15 years we'll be in a position uh, to identify lupus patients uh, either before they get the disease or as soon as they get diagnosed from a genetic profiling, which I'm sure people will develop, we'll know pretty quickly what sort of lupus they're going to get and even when they're going to get it.